imagination simply contained in the mind? Or does it tap into an unseen world with messages waiting to be told? There is a place where legends cross over into our world, where strange visions and whispers beckon and superstition takes hold. Step into the Black Cat's shadow. Welcome back to the Black Hat Shadow. And I'm your host, Andy, podcasting from Kansas City, Missouri. And I'm Phantom Dark Dave, coming at you from the heart of Texas. Yeah, so we got a special guest interview today. And uh, we're very excited to have this fellow on with us to to talk some some cult movies and uh, talk some trauma. And give it up for Jason Yashannon. Hey, hey. Very good on my last name. Most people don't get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was just a hunch. I get Yakanini. <laughs> Yakanin, Yakanin. So well oh, done. I know what done. you mean. My last name is Usri, and oh. no, nobody gets it right, but it's it's all good. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, we uh, we we both are you know big fans of uh, poultry guys, you know, and, and trauma movies and things like that. And so you know, we we jumped on the chance to get you on the podcast to talk about not just that, but talk about you know your your uh other projects you've been into and going to you know poultry guys though like were you a, were you like aware of trauma like when you went to, for that part or were... uh, 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 truthfully yeah no i was not i actually had not even heard of it uh okay. and and um basically what i was doing was uh i'm from um cleveland originally ohio so after i graduated school i made the move to manhattan and uh, really just started doing, I guess, what every actor kind of does. I started looking for auditions and I kind of was looking for things that just fit my type, uh, meaning like, you know, for example, like uh, even now I kind of I have a general kind of niche that I usually look for um, mm-hmm. in terms of projects and things like that. So when I saw this this uh, audition notice for Poultry Guys, it, it basically said like a younger kind of like nerdy kind of guy who becomes the hero in the end so i thought well all right whatever i'll just you know that's oh, at the time before now this was I'm, I'm kind of a little older than some people may think this is when kind of like mailing in your headshot was still a thing i mean i guess you can still do that now but now <laughs> everything's kind of done you know electronically but um so i just mailed it in and said hey i you know i, I hope you consider me for an audition and 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 uh they did obviously i mean i guess but uh yeah so then i went in and i and i kept getting called back and called back and by the last call i could say there was probably like nine or ten callbacks by the very last callback uh the one other there was one guy there were a couple guys who were up for my role the one guy who went in before me like on the final callback ended up getting naked okay during his (laughs) <laughs> I wasn't in the room he got naked I was definitely like down to my boxer briefs like it was kind of madness I'd never really and that was just the audition you know part of it but um so so after they offered me the role I actually called my brother um who still lives in Cleveland I said oh yeah I just you know I got this acting job you know it's some some trauma something called trauma and he was like whoa 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 wait <laughs> Really? Yep. You did, and I was like, "Yeah, is that is that a good thing or is that a bad thing?" He knew a lot about it. He was like, "Oh," and he started listing all these movies: oh, Sergeant Kabuki Man and uh, you know Toxic Avenger, blah blah blah. And I, I mean, I guess I had known about the cartoon Toxic Avenger, but I didn't put like I didn't really know that was you know what that was. So he was like, "Just be prepared." You know, it's this <laughs> has a very deep following, very underground following. So um, yeah, until I actually kind of got the role no i had never i had never actually heard of it yeah sorry, to, sorry. yeah no, no. It's, it's all good uh i don't know like it, it's always interesting like you know when you're watching a movie you kind of get a sense maybe of the production like how it went like if it was crazy or whatever i and I, so i'm always curious about especially on a trauma movie like 
how how did the production go? Was it just like was it like structured or was it just like uh, crazy or I don't kind of give us like a feel for how the production went? Crazy, it was crazy. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, no doubt about it. Lloyd hmm, is crazy. I mean, he's crazy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All of the, all of, I will say this, all of the actors were treated very well, you know, um, you know, he always talks about like, you know, you're going to sleep on the floor and you're not, you're going to eat like pizza for dinner and you're, you know, and there's one bathroom and and that's all true. I mean, that is all true. But I will say he always treated the actors very, very well. You know, the, the crew, they may, they may answer this differently. I mean, he would scream at them. He would cuss them out. He would throw stuff. He would. So, I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, mean, I saw both sides of it. I mean, uh, you know, he would yell at someone calling them like fucking retards. And then on the one hand, he'd be like, oh, Jason, you know, here's some money for dinner, you know, um, or, okay, do you want to like take a minute and like get some coffee? And then he'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. I, I don't really like it was like it was mayhem, but he definitely had his own system that works. I mean, yeah. obviously it works. And people I mean, people were working for him for free. I mean, there were there were people on the wow. crew who were from uh, not America. I don't I at, now I'm kind of blanking where they were from. I and mean, they were all over the place mm-hmm. wanting to work with him. So I, I guess it was like an organized chaos. Oh, yeah. Does that? I don't know. I don't yeah, know no, that, that's interesting. Uh, and also, you know, kudos on the, you know, casting you in that role because, you know, I feel like you, Lloyd makes a perfect version of an older you. I, you guys have a strong resemblance to each other, really. I mean, <laughs> that, and I can say this, this will might maybe get me off on another tangent. That scene in the basement, him and I, when we had to do that little oh, song, yeah. that was the hardest scene to, to shoot in the movie. Yeah. And you would think it'd actually be easy because there weren't that many special effects. There, it was just us down in the basement. He was a he was ridiculous. He didn't know his lines. He was so hard to like. <laughs> I mean, in a fun way, it was all fun. But like, I just can't take him seriously. Right. You know what right. I mean? So that that actually that one scene probably took an entire day. And how long is that scene? Four a minutes. matter of minutes. I yeah. mean, it's... You know, he, yeah. So hard and. Does he? Is that the scene? Does he show his balls in that scene too? <laughs> There's a lot of things that get shown in that scene. There's matching butt tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that didn't help make it any easier. But I just couldn't stop laughing every time I just looked at him. I just started laughing. So yeah, yeah. that that scene was particularly difficult to film, actually. So the fact that it was a musical was definitely something I wasn't expecting when I started watching this movie. And uh, I noticed you actually sang. Your parts, right? You actually sang in the songs, right? We did. I um, I, yeah. I, I don't consider myself that good of a singer. I, I was definitely very, very nervous about that part okay. of it. Um, the only thing that I could say helped was that um, we weren't singing live when we were actually shooting. We before before we were um, sent out to Buffalo to actually shoot we recorded all the songs in New York at a recording studio so that when it was time to film those scenes that had the songs, we were just lip singing them. Okay. Which, but it is all us. I mean, we were yeah. in the recording studio in the booth with the headphones, you know, um, and that took forever. So I could only imagine if like we were trying to do it while we were shooting, it would have t- oh, yeah. the movie would have t- taken like a year to, to film just because, you know, of so many like, hit the wrong note, say the wrong words, you know, forget what you're singing about. Um, So thank God for that because I'm not a big singer. Um, I have done since Poultry Guys a couple musicals, but only as the drummer in them because I do play the drums. Um, And uh, these particular musicals, when you're the drummer, I mean, they just give you like a couple of the ooh-ahs and the doo-wops to sing. I'm not going and like belting a solo anywhere. So... I was glad we recorded it earlier because I, yeah, I really um, don't like to sing that much. <laughs> hey, it was really convincing, man. It made it much more enjoyable too. Oh, okay. All right, well, well so much uh, energy that you brought to the movie. A lot of a lot of live action sequences, and you mentioned how 
it was hard, you know, to take Larry or not Larry. Always do that, Larry. It's Lloyd uh, Kaufman. Seriously, is I think that's the point. Like you can't take that guy seriously. He's nuts. Even on the special introduction, there's like a 15 minute thing they filmed specifically for the DVD where you guys are at this movie theater. Uh-huh, and you uh-huh. do like the walkthrough and it's just there's chaos everywhere. And that's the first thing you see before you see the movie. And you're like, what am I getting into? I mean, you're watching a movie called Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead. So you have to be a fan already of, of that type of film. But you really don't know where it's going to go. And that movie took me to places that I still I expected, but then I didn't expect. And that just made to the charm, you know, to the movie and your ability to play the character of Arby, who kind of goes everywhere in the film. You do not know what that character is going to do next. And yeah. uh, the sensational, the practical effects that you got to deal with was awesome. Some, something else which was also fun about doing the movie, but also with working with Lloyd, is he he's definitely big on improving. Like, I could, I could come up to him and be like, oh, I got this great idea for the scene. I, you know, I don't really know if it's going to work. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's try it okay let's do it yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd let us do anything i mean he would literally like let you try anything if it worked and um <laughs> and so that that as an actor that's that's always good you know to have a director who's like let's try it let's go for it yeah. um you know one of the scenes and and i'm not talking about like i'm like anything lines uh gag like uh physical comedy gags really anything he would kind of he'd be open to it um especially because there would be a lot of fighting on set not so much with like the actors but with like him and the writers him and the special effects people him you know he would like i said he would scream at everyone yeah you know in like a char- in, in like a lloyd coffin way that everyone i think wants to hear <laughs> <laughs> But so, like, you know, he if, if something wasn't working and if you had something, he'd be like, fuck it, let's do it. All right, let's try it. Just do it. And and he'd let you kind of run with that. So that was that was actually yeah. pretty refreshing, you know? Yeah, I imagine because, you know, sometimes when you're reading a script and, you know, you kind of you kind of see the scene play out in your mind probably before you do it. And you're like, I think, you know, so that that's cool that you have that freedom to uh, express, you know, put your creativity into that role and not just follow like a set. Uh, okay, hit your mark here. Say your line like this. You know, yeah. I mean, we really let us play, yeah, which is good, which is nice for an yeah. actor. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, so, I mean, you obviously went went on to do some other things, and uh, you know, I think you know, like your next thing that uh, people will probably will recognize you from is uh, you know your segment in VHS, the first VHS movie. You right. Did, yeah. Yeah. T- yeah. Is it Tuesday the seventeenth or something like that? Yeah, which is like which is a tribute to the Friday the Thirteenth movies. Yeah. Um, a director from that you may know um, from uh, I Sell the Dead. Oh, okay. Um, big big guy with glass eyed picks, which is um, uh, here in Brooklyn, um, indie horror movie uh, production company. And um, speaking of, of improv, actually, that's a, that was another film, honestly, where. Um, we, we, we filmed it once. Okay. So it was a bunch of different directors filming segments. And then it kind of almost like a creep show, you know, has that narrative, oh, yeah. little vignettes and, and, uh, we filmed it once and we filmed it, filmed it upstate in uh, Woodstock. And after the, after we sent kind of what we filmed, they, they, the producers are kind of the, you know, the people kind of in charge were like, you know, eh, it sounds a little too scripted. Why don't you try it again? So the awesome thing about, what we ended up doing was he literally our, our director, Glenn McQuaid, his name is gave us the camera, me and the, you know, the other actors and said, all right, this is kind of where we want you to get to. Like we want you to get to, um, let's just pretend like, uh, you know, we want you to get to talking about this bird, Ernie, but however you get there is up to you. Go ahead and just shoot it. Okay. <laughs> and so we would just, go off in the woods with the camera. Cause it's supposed to be, you know, found footage. So it's like friends up at the lake, they've all got the video camera. And um, a lot of that stuff was improv. You know, my, uh, my friend drew who plays opposite of me, I mean, him getting naked and jumping in the lake <laughs> that, that was not, that was not scripted. He was just oh, like, yeah, yeah I'm doing it. <laughs> hey, is he the same guy who auditioned for poultry guys? You talking about getting naked <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason, I attract a lot of like naked guys. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but he got naked and like jumped in and and that was 
I guess, again, as an actor, like the scene in the van when we're driving to the lake and, it, you know, we were really allowed to just, you know, he said, our director said, don't break the law, but, you know, do what, it, you know, just kind of get to the story of her bringing you up there and why you guys are there. And you can really kind of go wherever it takes you and we'll edit everything out, which was really, which was really pretty awesome. Um, the There was a scene where they made all of us get in the lake, which was cut out, which was just awful because it was like October in upstate uh, New York. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of shrinkage going on, but, <laughs> but, you know, that's okay. It's, you know, but, um, that was, that was also the first film. Um, I had never had like a body cast made. I mean, I guess I had one of my butt made for poultry guys, but this was <laughs> the other half of my body. So that was nice to, yeah. that was kind of just cool. It, it now lives in someone's house. I think the F, the special effects guy says he brings it out for Halloween. Oh, with, wow. like, <laughs> like on his yard. So, somewhere you guys know what that is. <laughs> uh, Jason comes out and, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I was curious how that, what, you know, your death and in that segment, I was curious how they did that because it, it looks like they're really stabbing you, <laughs> you know. So, so it was cool. So it was, uh, it was like from the tor- torso, I guess, up, mm-hmm. right? Um, and uh, it was, um, I guess, when when Spider the character trips, as I fall, they kind of they cut and then bring the dummy down and then there were blood packs in the forehead okay. that they stabbed through it the special effects guy had a you know a button that kind of released the blood and kind of shot the blood i, I mean i don't really right. know that side of it but right yeah i'm sure there's some sort of technical term for what they did i i don't know what it is we'll just say spew spew he, they, <laughs> the blood spews out and spider dies <laughs> uh, so yeah but um that was another really good just uh um you know director letting us kind of play with the story but this kind of brings me to something that i was uh worked on recently that i'm pretty proud of that i think you guys might actually like yeah being radio and podcast guys this is called tales from beyond the pale this is season three and what this is is i wa- i wasn't alive during like the um times when you listen to things instead of watching them you know oh, like yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, and War of the Worlds. Where yeah. you, you guys weren't alive then either, right? I mean, no. Okay, but <laughs> no, but we appreciate radio drama. Go ahead. Okay, so that's exactly what it is. But they're um they're horror based. Oh, cool. So I think you and your listeners might like them. Um, actually, my director on this was my same director from VHS, Glenn McQuaid, oh. and our segment. Um, it's cool. There's like uh, there's a lot of different kind of uh segments in it. My segment is uh. Food chain, and actually, this has some good. This has a lot of good people. Written by April Snelling, and uh, it had Larry Fessenden in it. Oh, I'm yeah. probably butchering his last name, but he's another Glass Eye picks. Jeremy Gardner, Drew Moreland, who was also in VHS with me. Um, Sean Young, which you guys probably know, big '80s actress. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, myself. Uh, lo- do you know Lauren Ashley Carter? The name sounds familiar. Big, yeah, big indie yeah. actress. Um, Glenn, our director from VHS, and uh, I don't think I left anyone else out there. So that's my little plug. Uh, oh. I'm pretty proud. It, it it's kind of like my first ever voiceover thing I've ever done. Like I'd say, like legitimate, like voiceover kind of work. So kind of proud of that. And I think you guys would like it, being you know into radio. Oh yeah, is what's that the, is what's that out and available right now? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely out. You they've got they've got a website, Tales from Beyond the Pale. Dot com. Um, I also believe it is available on iTunes. Uh, okay. I'm going to tag everyone in this All right. that was associated with that, telling them I was plugging it, and you know, <laughs> awesome, yeah, <laughs> yeah. perfect. Mine. Yeah, that's oh. awesome. I'll definitely check it out because uh, you know we listen to a lot of radio, a lot of podcast stuff, and I still listen to a lot of the super old, old time radio because sometimes when you're driving, you don't want to listen to music. You know, you, it's easy for somebody to tell you a story. And uh, I'll definitely check it out. I'll get back to you. I'm sure it's awesome. A lot of a uh, lot of big name people in there too. I, I'm pretty sure the guy who plays Hellboy is in one of them. Ron Perlman. Um, yeah, yeah. I okay. think so. Not not in the one I did, I, but I think he, he definitely... did. Uh, he did voice acting in Batman, so I wouldn't be surprised. Well, who was he in that? Uh, in not that this is a Batman chat, but uh, in the 2004-2008 Cartoon Network, The Batman, he played Killer Croc. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Oh, cool. I appreciate cartoons too. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, so um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you sharing us about that. But uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about that you're working on right now or going to be working on soon that you can talk about? That was that was my most recent thing um, okay. that I've been working on. Um, I just went out for something that I didn't get, <laughs> but but you know that's hey, that's the life of an actor. But you guys are writers, right? Yep. Someone I I am DB'd one of you. One of you guys. Right, it's you, right? Yeah, Dave. Yeah, the white trash looking guy over here. That's me. <laughs> oh, oh, you. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's what I was just about to say. Which is the white trash looking guy? <laughs> That's it. Um, hey, yeah, when you talked about you know pizza and sleeping on the floor, I was like, I don't hear anything bad yet. <laughs> that, that was the other thing. You know, it was it was. I'll I'll jump back to poultry guys really fast, but um, you know that was the other thing. Um, it was it was everyone, and when I say everyone, it was all the cast, all the crew, living in this uh abandoned it was it was attached to a church so i have to assume it was some sort of like abandoned rectory <laughs> dwelling hmm. we were all in there the special effects people were in the basement there was you know the main room with like kitchen then upstairs there was i don't know how many bedrooms um ours mine thankfully i'm going to sound kind of like a diva but had the only working air conditioner in oh. the entire house <laughs> Oh, yeah. got <laughs> but I mean, there were people sleeping in closets. There was one. There was one lady. She was on the special effects team. She slept in a closet. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, so we were all in there. There was one shower, which Lloyd is up was always big about. Oh, there's gonna be one shower, and but the actors did always get to cut the line. I, I don't know why. I mean, because we were covered with fake blood and semen and puke and you know <laughs> chicken guts. <laughs> Uh, so, um, but it was cool. It was like, uh, summer, it was like a horror movie summer camp, you know, it was really a, really a pretty good, uh, experience. And, um, now any other gigs I've gotten since have been, you know, like really so nice in comparison, like, like, oh my, like, uh, I had a, I had one little line on the show blue bloods. I don't know if you ever watched blue bloods. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Like. For one line, they came and they like take took my clothes away and brought them to my dressing room and you know like <laughs> there was like homemade chicken soup and there was you know it was you know uh, beautiful production and beautiful facility for one little line and it was like oh my and then I think of poultry guys and it was like just pure mayhem and like dirt and fake blood and flies and you know people sleeping in closets and on the ground and. Uh, you know, one person was robbed during production and oh, no. <laughs> it really was kind of a different world. So, um, you know, uh, I, I, I talk to Lloyd every, every now and again. And, uh, you know, I have, I have told him like, Hey, you know, I, I'd be, I'd love to do like a cameo in something. I keep hearing they're remaking toxic Avenger. Yeah, I, don't know I think I saw true, something about that, but I keep saying, Hey, can I, can I come in for an audition or can I be like, whatever, just like an extra or like a little cameo. I mean, I don't know if they're going to do cameos, you know, but hey. I think it would be genius if they redid Toxic Avenger and Toxie go because in Toxic Avenger, there's a restaurant scene. Well, they should do it in Poultry Guys and you should be working there. That would be <laughs> Lloyd. Go ahead and let's get this thing done. Let's uh, let's send this to Lloyd. That's an excellent <laughs> idea. So, <laughs> oh, man. so And everybody will get that reference to who watches it. Do you think so? Oh, I'm telling you, like. Just being around the mediums and, and circuiting a lot of the conventions and stuff, like somebody always has some sort of trauma uh, shirt or gear around. And I talk to people. And I'm like, you know, have you seen Poultry Guys? You know, you got to check it out. And they're like, Night of the Chicken Dead. That sounds awesome. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people you talk to, you know, it's 50 50. Yes, we've seen it. Or no, we haven't. But can we watch it? Do you have it? Where can I see it? I'm like, oh, well, you know, there's tons of places you can check it out, you know, and we promote it. Go to go to iTunes, go to, you know, wherever you, you digitally download or buy your movies at, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah man, I got to say, like, I was really impressed with it. I thought your, your character was super energetic, really easy to relate to in the essence of, man, I like what this guy's doing here. He's obviously going to be the focus of the film and carry us through here. And you don't just get a character who you're not invested in, who drops you off. And I think if... Um, if a grace of things work out there, it would be really cool to get you in another trauma film. I'm behind that idea. hundred percent. Hey, I mean, uh, I would definitely be open to it. Uh, I was okay. Now 
I don't really know what happened with this. The last podcast I did was actually with a guy from New Zealand, actually, who huh. was talking about redoing Terra Firmer, but kind of modernizing it, and yeah. had asked me to come aboard to, you know, to be the main role there. Um, I'm not sure where we kind of left off with that, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm I, never say never, right? I mean, I'm definitely open and I know you down there write some stuff. So if you ever write a, you know, you need someone, I don't know who, uh, works at a restaurant or <laughs> <laughs> you never know, you might write a scene like that. Uh, the last thing I went out for, which I, I didn't end up getting, I think I mentioned was, uh, for a HBO show called, um, Crashing? Have, have you guys watched this? Produced by Judd Apatow. Um, oh, that's a big name. I mean, I just, I mean, I just went out for like a little one-liner. Well, a couple lines. Car, car rental guy. So okay. uh, maybe you'll have a car rental scene, and you'll be like, oh yeah, Jason and Shannon, yeah, uh, car rental guy, yeah. All right, let's <laughs> let's use. Oh, dude, that. we'll uh, we'll definitely stay in touch with that. I love networking, and <laughs> also I'm gonna throw another name at you because Troma has a big following. But are you familiar with Charles Band and the Full Moon stuff that he does? Mm -mm, I'm going to write this down. So if you like the attention that Troma gets, or if you understand that kind of following it has, um, equal to that, right? Opposite ends of Earth, as always, there's Charles Band who does Full Moon. They produce stuff like Evil Bong and Ginger Dead Man, and it's the same audience. If you've seen one, you've seen the other. And they're honest to truth. There's about 15 of these films. There's like (laughs) six or seven Evil Bongs. There's three or four Ginger Dead Mans. There's a crossover where they actually do cross over and full moon's been around forever. I mean, forever. I mean, the guy who, uh, Charles band, you know, he was involved in all the old stuff, you know, critters and ghoulies and all that. And this is what he's doing now. And he produces just like, uh, Lloyd, he does it all of his own stuff. Definitely need to get you involved in that. That's where I would go. Like band, like B A N D, like a rock band. Correct. Charles band. Yep. If you, if you pull that up, you will see a litter of credits of things that he produces. And just like Lloyd does all his own stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would love to see you trends in on both. You'd be the only guy who could do both of those things. Critters five, maybe. Let's. Uh, <laughs> how many hey, critters did they make? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio is in Critters three, so I'm just yeah, saying. I was saying he was in Critters three, so uh, basically I'm almost to his level. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the Revenant part two. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, this is great, Jason. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, yeah, we appreciate you coming on and and, and spending some time with us. Thank you guys for listening and we really appreciate it. And to say thanks, we we are having a contest going right now. So the prize for the contest is a brand new Blu-ray of the Lucio Fulci's The Black Cat, which is put out by Arrow. It's a, it's a great release, lots of special features. So all you have to do to be entered is to leave us an iTunes review. And I think instead of waiting till 25, we're just going to do a drawing once we hit 10. So right now we're at six reviews, so we just need a few more. Like like I said, once we hit ten, we'll do a drawing to see who won that. And uh, you know, October's coming up here in the next month, and you know, in the horror community, it's just like Christmas time for us. So we want to, uh, you know, we do want to do some special things. We we've got some great episodes coming up in the month of October. We're really excited about it. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it and stay tuned for those. And as always, you can find us out there on social media, on Twitter. You can find us at Black Cat Podcast. And if you want to follow Dave, he is at Phantom Dark Dave. You can also find us on Facebook and Horror Amino as well. And if you'd like to send any of us an email, you can certainly do that at blackcatpodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to send us show ideas or comments, feedback, anything like that, we'd love to hear from you guys. 
And Dakota's, uh, his own email is dakshadowbane at gmail.com. That's D-A-K-S-H-A-D-O-W-B-A-N-E at gmail.com. Um, I know he'd love to hear from you guys too. He's been away for a little bit, but he will be back here shortly in the next couple episodes probably. And uh, you can also find our website at www.blackcastshadow.com. And there you find all of our past episodes, as well as the links to where you can download them on iTunes and Stitcher and things like that. And you also find the link to our eBay movie store on there too. So on there we have uh, movies on DVD, Blu-ray, VHS. Try to find some hard-to-find stuff for you guys on there. Um, you know, maybe offer up something a little bit different than you might find on a on another movie site uh so you know when you buy a movie on there you're helping us out make you know you're helping us out here on the podcast uh cover some of the costs and we really appreciate it so remember guys to take a closer look at the world around you and you may just find that it is stranger and more mysterious than you thought especially in the black cat shadow